Warning up front, this video is only on travel tips if you're going to go metal detecting overseas. There's no metal detecting in it, so I would encourage you, if you're not interested in traveling, check out now because it's a long video. Hey guys, so the first thing I want to get out of the way is can you bring a metal detector on a plane? And depending on who you ask, you get different answers. Well, I can only tell you in my case, the answer I got was yes. I called British Airlines and he said yes. I read their rules online and it talks about lithium batteries and it's no different than a cell phone or a, today's detectors uh, or a laptop. They're, they're pretty much all the same the way you charge them. So uh, if you read into that, you can do it. And also, you know, Chicago Ron, that's who I did my trip with to England. He's been doing it 20 years and never had an issue. So let me show you right now. I'm going to read it. Um, I cut out two different things from British Airways, and let's take a look at that. First thing I do is I went to British Airways, looked at the rules and regulations for checked baggage lithium batteries, and it says right there, kept in the device. So I had the XP Deus 2 and the Equinox. It is locked in there. Can't get to the battery. Device must comply with switched off. I did that and I had no spare batteries uh, in my checked baggage for that detector whatsoever. The next section I found says in your checked baggage the device with batteries installed can travel in checked baggage and must be protected from accidental activation. So on the coil just wrapped a little bit of again the XP Deus wrapped it around the charging uh, part on the coil some electrical tape device must comply with switched off did that and again no spare batteries uh, just the detector so that's that's with me now still check with your airlines if you're flying and look at their rules and regulations but uh, it's very common anymore for people to fly with detectors the more modern ones that charge again like your cell phone like the legend the equinox uh, the xp Deus. you should not have an issue flying with those. I flew with one in checked baggage and carry-on. Both of them went through, not a problem whatsoever with TSA. And uh, But do your homework, but this is my experience on this trip that I went in April of 2023. Let's talk about packing now. Look at the way I have the boots packed. You can actually fill these up as well. These are filled up with, uh, that's a little cap, toboggan cap, socks, belt, and all kind of goodies in these uh, boots to save you some room as well. Underwear, socks, uh, more socks, underwear. Now this is, as uh, so we get three here, just different things I'm gonna need. I'm taking four pair of pants. They have a washer and dryer, that's recommended. And as you can see, you're getting down to the metal detector. This is my backup, which is my Equinox. And I've got it taken apart, the coil off, these little strands around. It's so very important to do, make sure it's packed well. Now in my case, and a lot of guys don't, but I'm gonna bring a shovel. I've got a two-piece shovel here. Uh, it's a nice one by Nocta Macro, the little breakaway shovel. Never use this. Got this at Myers Metal Detectors. Stop the press. Let me tell you right now, that was a mistake. I did travel okay through TSA with a shovel. No issues, but I didn't need a shovel. And I'll talk more about that a little bit later. Just was not needed and actually the shovels they provided was so much better. And the rest of this is clothing packed away in here. Everything is marked. This is the um, arm strap, the cuff, arm cuff, I'm sorry, and the charging cable for the Equinox. And I'm going to go through this twice. Now, this is the week before 
packing. I want to make sure I pass that weight limit test. And then up in here, I've got, I guess I don't need to take them out. There's the coil, knee pads, I think the chesty backup for the uh, GoPro or my camera, which I'm using is the DJI GoPro's generic name. So there you go, guys. 49 pounds. Weigh it twice. Double check, recheck. Go through a list. Make sure you've got everything uh, that you need because you only got one shot at this. Once you get over there, whether it's England, Scotland, or wherever you're going, uh, you got to make sure that you've got everything with you. First thing you want to do, and the very most importantly, is put right on the top a copy of the metal detector you're using. So there's no doubt in their mind, copy your passport and information in there. Next up is my carry-on. This is going to have, it does have my um, XP Days 2. It's broken down. A lot of the camera gear, the batteries, my laptop. Uh, you want to put something as uh, something that can mark your bag, set it off from everybody else. I had these little wraps that I used. And uh, I guess we could take a quick look at it. There you go. Now I'm going to put the uh, instructions for the XP Deus 2 on top of this so that they can see it. This is the coil. What I haven't done yet, because I'm going to charge this before I leave, put a piece of electrical tape over this. This is the contacts to charge it. And in case they ask, keep it a little safer. This is the neck band that I'm going to use to record with my DJI. And here it is. You just, I just got some shirts and other items thrown in over it. This is the case. I'll talk a little bit more about this that uh, holds the RC unit and it slides right in. You can get these online. This is the way to go, but we'll talk about this a little bit more later. Right here is the setup. And it's just, I mean, it barely fits, guys. I mean, I've got it. It's not real tight. I got enough room for some wiggle, but it's in there. I've got my belt that holds my finds. Got everything I need in here in case my luggage gets lost. This will be in the cabin with me. Headphones, extra eyeglasses in case you never know. Yours get broke. You step on them, something stupid. Hand warmers, it will be a little chilly. And if you're going overseas, obviously... You want to bring your own travel adapter. I've got two of these with a USB port as well. So I can charge all my equipment. And the rest of this is like a little selfie stick. That's it. Just make sure you pack it tight. This was 30-something pounds. I'll put my medicine in here. Actually got three pair of gloves, that's recommended. It's gonna get wet, nasty, and muddy. So I've got some rubber line gloves, fairly cheap. Make sure I've got those so you can use one pair, they can dry out, you got another one for the next day. And just, man, you gotta think about all this. So many little things you gotta remember to take. Man, I gotta tell you, the gloves were a lifesaver. Actually, I had two more pair that had um, a lining on the inside. It was cold. One day it was about 53 and it was raining. And I am so glad I had a backup pair of gloves because they did get wet on the inside a little bit. And we were able to switch the gloves out for the next day and let those dry out. So to take if you're going somewhere like I did, England, bring some extra gloves. So if you're going to England, you're going to need a backpack. You're going to have to have your lunch, some water. This year they should bring a, a little bottle. So they're going to have water jugs. You can pour your water in here. And you'll have your sandwich, snacks, batteries, any accessory that you need, camera gear, if you plan on videotaping. I made up, again, for branding and marketing, my YouTube channel. Just took one of my decals, had it laminated, and hung it off the bag. But I'm going to have everything in here. Now, going to England, it's packed. When I go out to hunt every day, it's going to be 
four times lighter. I'm just going to not have anything other than the food, water, and maybe a couple extra batteries. But I will tell you that this I've got Band-Aids over here. Another good tip, those Band-Aids, I had to use them. I got some, luckily I brought that go on your hill. Because I normally don't wear boots, and I was thinking, well, if I get a blister, I'll need something. Sure enough, day two or three, I can't remember which, now it's all a big blur. <laughs> I've been back almost two weeks. I got a blister on both. So I put those heel band-aids on, and they work like a champ. So bring your own first aid. Don't count on anybody else. I mean, they may have it, but you got to look after yourself. Over here, got dude wipes. Don't ask. Uh, if you're out there in those fields and you've got to go, there's, there's not a bathroom. So you just got to get a little creative, hit the wood line, have you some dude wipes. This is a pretty nice backpack. I'm able to get quite a bit in here. And uh, all my gear, I've got everything labeled. Mike for my cell phone. Let's just look at a couple. It's not, when you get over there, <laughs> you want to be organized. Charging for the XP days and so on. Everything in here's got a little bag. It's been marked. You got to charge your equipment each night after you go metal detecting. Again, if you have a YouTube channel, now you're talking about a mic, camera gear, multiple cameras, cell phones, laptop, you name it. Yeah, guys, so I'm going to wear this on the airplane. This is my uh, little personal carry on. And I'm going in business class, so you're allowed to have this. It won't take up a lot of room. I'll have a little six-foot pod. I'll show you that on the plane. It's going to be so cool. So remember now, I've been back two weeks, so it's a retrospect. I can look back. The backpack probably, well, I will say, was not a good idea to take out on the field. Uh, I lasted day one with it. Folks, those fields are miles long, and you're walking 11 hours a day. Uh, you have to take your rain gear. Now, if you're going to England, it could rain, you know, within five minutes and, and catch you off guard. So you've got to have your rain gear. And although they do have a van and they park nearby, you can always walk back. That was what I ended up doing. Uh, it just was too heavy. Uh, my neck was getting sore. And I, the, the backpack, I don't think, was a great idea. So it lasted day one. I left everything else back at the uh, the van. Now, if Ron had to leave and run some errands, um, we just had a place that we'd stash our gear. Nobody's out in the middle. You're out in the middle of nowhere. So he would always leave a few chairs, and we'd you know, put a tarp over our backpacks and rain gear, whatever else we had to, to lay out. So... All right, guys, I'm about a week away. I'm in the backyard. And just again, I want to recap. Don't be afraid to ask questions. I called a couple of friends. Ken, thank you, Ken, for helping me out. And uh, I talked to Rob. And, you know, they had already went to England. So what a better way than to ask the guys who have just got back who went there last year. And they'll give you a lot of tips. I got some great tips from both those guys. And uh, that was able to help me out things that I didn't think about, such as the dude wipes, golly. Um, and Ken was telling me about magnesium, uh, take you know some vitamins so you don't get the leg cramps. And uh, just be prepared. Have everything you need. Write a list. Check it twice. Pack and repack the week before you go. Don't wait to the last minute because you're going to forget something if you do. Double check everything. One last thing I think is important. Watch as many UK videos as you possibly can on YouTube. And you're going to start seeing the different finds, the names, how they identify them. That will save you a lot of time when you're out there in the field. You want to have to stop and call the, the flow officer over to help you identify something or the expert. And um, you'll already have a good idea what they have out there. There's my little dog, Mars, out there. What's he peeing on something, probably? Um, so I've watched a buttload of videos, and I've learned so much. I bought a book on the coins from the UK, and I've just tried as much as I can. The last six months, I've been preparing for this bucket list trip, and I cannot wait. This is a used book I got on Amazon, and it's Coins of England. 
Uh, what edition is this? 2020. So, man, I've been going through this. So interesting. And, you know, when you've got some of them identified and you get back, this will help you. You can look at the different types of bus first, third, third bus variety. I mean, it's just got so much in here on the coins. Well worth the money, especially when you get back. I think more than being over there because you're not going to have a whole lot of time and plus before these are exported back whatever you find they'll have them identified for you but this will give you a little bit more detail on uh, what you find it's gonna be a great great book oh man i thought it's gonna be a short video I keep thinking of these little things uh, what if it rains and it's gonna rain there it's always windy and rainy in england so i actually have a little backpack cover for that i had to think about that for a little bit and i've got some really good rain gear i got at bass pro shops so don't cut corners on the rain gear they said that's that and the boots that's the two biggest tips you can get is get some good boots and rain gear like i said don't cut corners on the rain gear uh man it rained so hard on day three it was just ridiculous so as much money as you can spend on rain gear, get the best that you can afford. That's a great tip because I got to tell you, it's got to rain, especially if you go to England. Yeah, there's a, it just, next thing you know, it's clear. And then five minutes later, it's raining and it may rain all day or it may rain for an hour. So just be prepared. Phil, I've got headphones I bought. I know I have the bone conductor headphones, but they don't cover your ears. And he said it's going to be windy, could be cold. So I bought some Grey Ghost headphones for the XP Deus 2, and that will keep my ears warm. I'll be able to hear with that wind blowing 100 miles an hour. And uh, just think through it all as much as you possibly can. This is another good tip for you. Before you go, why not a little extra water repellent for your hat, backpack, you do your raincoat, they even make some for your boots. Give you that little bit of extra protection, some water repellent. Guys, that's about it. I hope you got some good tips. I know it was a long video, but if you're definitely going overseas, Ireland, Scotland, uh, England, whatever, do your homework. Uh, make sure that you've got everything covered. Pack smart. And, you know, most importantly, don't cut on anything. You tr try to get the very best that you can afford. And you'll be much happier in the end. Your trip will be well paid off. There's a few things I brought that I didn't think I'd need. And sure enough, uh, something on my utility belt broke. And I had some extra Velcro. So I had a little Phillips screwdriver, a few tools, extra bolts, batteries first aid kit i told you I had to use the band-aid so try to cover as much as you can because it's a long ways to go a lot of money to spend and you'll have a great time and you don't want to get over there and get caught short-handed hope you enjoyed the video please consider subscribing and mars would appreciate it as much as me and thanks for watching this video